Hi, everybody. This is Gina Cavalier. I'm the host of the Liberated Healer podcast. And today we have Steve Taylor on. He has a book that's just come out a few days ago um, titled The Adventure. It's uh, a practical guide to spiritual awakening. Um, the foreword is by Eckhart Tolle, and um, it's a part of the Eckhart Tolle edition through New World Library. And we'd like to welcome Dr. Steve Taylor to the show. Hi. Hi, Gina. Great to be with you. Thanks for yes. inviting me. I know it's your early evening, so thank you for coming on so uh, late in your time frame. Um, what you also wrote the leap, and so can you give us a little bit of kind of uh, your package of kind of some of the work that you do uh, in, to, together with these two books? I'm um, I have a role as a psychologist. I don't think of myself as a psychologist, but I I am a part time psychologist. And in my role as a psychologist, I investigate spiritual awakening in people. So I interview people who've undergone spiritual awakening. That all stems from my own, you know, my, my own experiences. That's why I became interested in the experiences of other people, because of my own kind of explorations and experiences. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time interview, interviewing cases of, um, you know, moments when people's awareness suddenly expanded and they suddenly felt connected to the universe. They suddenly sensed the oneness of the universe. They suddenly sense the, the interconnection of all things and the intrinsic spiritual nature of all things. So I, I wanted to understand why, why do people have these experiences? Why do people sometimes undergo transformations and they into a state when they have that kind of experience on an ongoing basis? And that was basically what I was doing in my book, The Leap. The okay. subtitle is The Psychology of Spiritual Awakening. Did you but have my... Your did you have your Sorry. own kind of spiritual awakening then similar to that experience was it sort of quick or well, in, in a sense but mine was um mine was kind of innate it was something that seemed to be always in within me as a child and as a teenager and i became aware of it um as a teenager that's when it could have manifested itself for the first time so i'd have these moments of these feelings of oneness with my surroundings uh, a sense of the aliveness of everything around me, the interconnection of everything around me. But it took me a few years to make sense of those experiences. And, you know, it took me a long time to integrate those experiences into my everyday life and sort of learn to function as a fairly normal human being, which is, which is difficult. Yes. Yeah. You know, definitely having to apply all the real world life and skills that you need to get through everything, but wanting to just kind of, experience of every single living thing around you um yeah yeah i i really can i can tell why you have been aligned with eckhart tolle um to me because i read um energy on a physical level first um when i read your book when i saw videos of you i really had the very similar sense of eckhart where you're you're very calming and very in a in a you're expansive, but you're very practical. And that's why I like that you use the practical in your title, um, mm, because okay. I feel like people get lost in all of this um, variety of spiritual context that's coming out right now. Um, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I mean, there, there are so many. I mean, it's one of the good things about living in the modern age that, that so many different spiritual practices and paths are available, available to us. If we'd been, been around 100 years ago, we wouldn't know anything. We probably well, we, we would probably know very little about Buddhism or Sufism or Taoism and all of these other, you know, spiritual and esoteric ideas. But now it's everywhere around us. So it can be a little bit confusing, even though fundamentally it's, it's great because we do we do have access to all of these practices. And that's exactly what your book, this the, the new book come that just came out does. Um, if you want, if you're a person kind of seeking um, you have this uh, draw, but you don't know where to look. This is a really great, I think, even a starter book for someone because you really do go through the processes of what they're going to be experiencing. Um, you can, if once you get to the end, you can kind of really take a a, a test gander at where you you stand. Yeah, hopefully that that's why that was my intention when I wrote the book. I mean, basically, after interviewing hundreds of people who've undergone spiritual awakening and studying all of the world's spiritual traditions, I highlighted eight essential qualities which everybody seems to mention, everybody seems to emphasize in spiritual awakening and which every spiritual tradition 
you know, um, expresses in slightly different ways. So, so my, my, my feeling is that if we concentrate on these eight qualities, which are so essential to spiritual awakening, then that is equivalent to actually experiencing spiritual awakening. So, so that was, yeah, that was my, um, my intention in, in writing the book. It's, and it's, it's really beautiful and you have poems and if you guys stay at the, till towards the end, we're going to have a poem, um, that he's going to, um, read for us. Um, and a lot of people know that I'm, you know, I've written a book about healing suicidal ideation and, the one area that I felt um, drawn to was the, the sense of life purpose. And you highlight that a lot. And you actually do something I haven't seen in other work where um, you don't have life purpose as one big giant, um, you know, singular thought. You break it down and show that you, there's about five or I think it's five or six different um, self purpose um categories and that help was really helpful to me i never seen the uh you know you might be this kind of person where that's mm -hmm. you might be this kind of person can you touch on that a little bit i feel like that's very helpful for people some people may have a, a certain orientation towards a certain type of purpose uh, some people may have a, a creative purpose you know, kind of self-expressive type of purpose and that's the way they express their their spirituality and that's the way that, that they give to the world through sharing their wisdom and their insight and inspiration. But other people may have a, a more directly altruistic purpose. So the, the way they express their spirituality is through helping others, mm -hmm. through contributing to the world. And that, that's one of the I mean, one of the major shifts which, which happens when a person undergoes awakening is that they shift from mm -hmm. a mode of taking from the world to a mode of giving to the world. They shift from from accumulating possessions or achievement to contributing to the world. So that's that's a really strong orientation in spiritual awakening. But other people may have a, a, more, a more directly self developmental type of purpose, when their purpose is to expand their their being in certain ways, expand their mind through learning new things and exploring new new ideas. And, you know, even they can apply that to spirituality where they love to explore different practices and paths. And so they develop themselves through learning and understanding. Yeah. And um, you see that survival, it depends on a, a collective awakening, you know. I uh, think so. Hmm. And um, can you tell me what has been some of the most exciting um, things that you've experienced watching sort of this interesting collective awakening. I feel like it's happening. I, I have a very strong feeling. I've always had a strong feeling that it, it must happen and also that it, that it is happening. And, you, you, and it's not just something that has been happening recently. In one of my books called The Fall, I trace it back to about 250 years ago. And I suggest that the first signs of it happening were, were back then in the, in the second half of the 18th century which was a very sort of pivotal time in, in history when lots of movements and trends got underway. Yeah. But I think certainly over the past 100 or 50 years, um, it, it's been you know intensifying all the time. So it's, it's become very visible, very apparent over the last couple of decades. And there's actually research showing that more people are having spiritual experiences than ever before. If you compare the number of people who report spiritual experiences now compared to 50 years ago, it's a lot higher. And also, one of the amazing things I found in my research is a phenomenon that I call transformation through turmoil. Uh, and that's when people undergo a spiritual awakening after or, or during periods of intense trauma in their lives. So it could be a, a diagnosis of cancer. It could be following a bereavement, a long period of depression, yep. a long period of addiction. There's, and that happens to many people when they reach the lowest point, when they feel that the, they have nothing left, then something shifts inside them and they undergo an awakening. They become completely different people. It sometimes happens um, when people contemplate suicide or even attempt suicide. It's almost as if when, you know, when you give up or when you're completely lost, your ego breaks down and a new self seems to arise in place of the normal ego, a new spiritually awakened self. So that's really fascinating because it, it happens a lot. You know, almost every week somebody writes to me and said, oh, this this thing you've written about, this transformation, you know, I've had it. And can I tell you about it? 
So I have this feeling that it's it is actually quite common, but a lot of people who undergo it don't know anything about spirituality, so they they wouldn't understand it in spiritual terms. It's okay. only later, maybe after a, even after a two three years, that they gravitate towards spiritual books and they think, oh, this is what's <laughs> happened to me. I've had an awakening. So yeah. I think that that transformation is quite common, and it seems to be increasing in frequency. So that is quite exciting. Uh, I would put myself in that category, even though I was already seeking spirituality, but, um, you know, I, I had really heavy suicidal ideation to the point where I sold my house and I was going to give away all my money. Oh. <laughs> um, and, um, and it, just one turmoil after the other. And, uh, through that process of giving away everything, <laughs> mm. um, I, I definitely did have a, a shift where I, yeah, I now can. I don't spend as much money on stuff I don't need. Um, I see the, I see the life in everything. You know, I feel so mm. like, uh, for example, a bird flew into my house the other day and flew right on my desk, like right next to my hand. And I got to just sit and enjoy that moment with wh however long that bird wanted to stay there. And you see the life just living around it. And it, and um, it, yeah, it's so beautiful. And I think it's really helped me to say, I'll never say a bad word about myself. I'll never, I can't mm. even hold a suicidal thought. I just start to laugh. Uh, wow. A part of me just says, that's not you anymore, you know? And it just wow. goes away. It's it, it's like almost instant now, but I definitely, mm. yeah. I, you know, so when you said that, I, I feel like people can really relate to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is, uh, I wouldn't say it's common, but it's it's not uncommon. You know, a lot of people, you know, hundreds of people have written to me, if not thousands, you know, speaking about this this shift. I was I was once on the radio here in the UK speaking about it on a, a kind of a, a major radio program with millions of listeners. And afterwards, you know, literally hundreds of hundreds of people wrote to me saying that they they'd undergone this shift, but they'd never talked about it. They they didn't really understand what had happened to them, but they'd undergone this shift following, you know, severe crises or, or challenges yeah. in their life. Well, can you break down just quickly some of the eight characteristics so we can um, they can understand what they might expect out of the book, kind of the process? Sure. Yeah. The, the first um, characteristic is what I describe as disidentification from the ego or freedom from the thought mind. And that's um, I, I say in the book that all of the qualities are essentially equivalent and none of them are more important than others. And you should develop them all roughly at the same time. But, but in some ways, disidentification is the, the gateway into the process of spiritual awakening. You know, you have to go undergo disidentification in order to move on to the other characteristics. Because while you're identified with your ego mind, you know, you're in a place of suffering and discord and you can't undertake this spiritual journey. You first need to step back from your thoughts and realize that you are not your thoughts, that there is a space between you and your thoughts. And once we've done that, we, we move on to gratitude, overcoming the taking for granted syndrome, being aware of the, the simple blessings in our lives and, and the blessing of life itself. Then we move on to presence live, or living in the moment. Um, another quality is altruism, giving to the world rather than taking. Also acceptance, which means becoming one with the reality of our lives, no longer resisting the reality of our lives. I also mentioned the importance of integration with the body, which is really important because the body is often neglected in, in spiritual development. The body is seen as a kind of enemy or something that's uh, kind of lower or inferior to us. And that's interesting. Yeah. The, the final quality I mentioned is embracing mortality. You know, the importance of being aware and acknowledging our own mortality as living beings and, and taking the opportunity of awakening through that realization. I think it's interesting you met, you're, you're putting a little focus on the body. I really believe people, um, especially people who are suicidal or, or in deep stage of depression that I've seen or that I've experienced, I felt a detachment from my higher self and from my body. And um, even though the negative thoughts, you know, were in my mind, they were affecting my body greatly. You know, I was... Mm. Um, and even though I thought I was eating well or taking care of myself, I really wasn't because it really is. You embody what you think. Yeah. Yeah. And it gets 
stuck. I feel like you get stuck in your physical body. At least for me, it actually did. And uh, I carried more weight when I was in that state, a lot more weight, almost like mm -hmm. uh, 50 pounds heavier last year. Um, right. When I first, you know, and, and it wasn't, um, it was the way how I was talking to my physical body. Um, and I was carrying a, a lot of trauma and all that weight. And um, I didn't feel like myself. And um, it was a part of reconnecting the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Interesting. I think a lot of people experience a sense of duality to their own body. They feel like, you know, they're, they're living in the body, but the body is not really them. Yeah. And uh, the, the body is separate to them. They, they, their, their feeling of, you know, their existence is centered in here in their mental space. And they don't really associate themselves with the rest of their being, their physical being. But that's one thing that changes when people undergo awakening. They really develop a sense of harmony with their body. They become attuned to their body. They start to treat their bodies a lot better. They change their diets for the better. You know, they give up on healthy eating habits or you know addictions. So, the, so in in general, there's a there's a real sense of attunement to the body. I guess that comes from an awareness that the body is not other to us. It it is us, and there's something spiritual about the body. It's not apart from spirit. The body is infused with spirit. And also, there's also an awareness of the the miraculous nature of the body and the body is miraculous you know the there are millions of tiny microscopic processes taking place every second to keep us healthy and alive so once you become aware of that you know you, you can't mistreat your body anymore you yeah. know, you, you begin to respect it yes and um that's why i go back to i help think it helps people who are depressed or suicidal because uh it's you know working on the mind but also just appreciating you know I even go to simply say, you know, when you get a little cut and to watch it heal itself, just even yeah. simply that, like mm. that's so miraculous. Mm. And we forget that 24 seven, it's just constantly mm. going without us saying, Hey, can you work today? Can you pump blood? Yeah. Today? You know, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like there are these millions of tiny workers within you. So all, all <laughs> really working their socks off just to keep you healthy and alive every second. And we take it for granted, but you know, absolutely, it, it, it is miraculous. <laughs> and I, I, I do like speaking about that because um, that connection is really important when you're, you're suicidal. Go, oh my gosh, I really am living in this magical thing that is so unique, unique, and uh, I deserve to be here. Um, so I like, I really appreciate that. And then also, you do mention about. Um, uh, sleep state uh, is transcending from normal sleep state to um, a thought mind sleep state or can you explain that a little bit because sleep has been a, a big part of healing for me and oh, you mean you've been, you've been sleeping more soundly and more deeply and for, for longer actually no sleep has been a constant challenge for me and mm -hmm. what I've realized is I'm going to bed anxious and I'm sleeping anxiously and I wake up even more anxious. So I'm trying to figure out ways. And that's from childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. That would happen when I was a child all the time. So I'm, I was always on guard. Um, so I know that's one of, the, one of the things I really need to continue, you know, clarifying and helping myself no matter mm -hmm. what it is. Um, but what kind of sleep advice or do you, do you speak about when you talk about sleep? with people in my, in my view you know um qu quality of sleep improves as we quieten the, the ego mind mm. because wh when the mind is active it creates a, a constant restlessness inside us you know and, and most human beings normal state is to have thought chatter within their minds running you know associating through different things and thinking about the future or the past and contemplating different scenarios you know all of these thoughts run through our minds constantly usually whenever our attention isn't occupied on in a task or sometimes when it, when we're not distracted by an entertainment you know our minds get busy and that busyness it creates it continues while we're asleep you know it makes it difficult for us to get to sleep and it causes agitation even while we're sleeping you know it may ca cause us to wake up at night it may prevent us from getting to a, a deep state of sleep yeah so so to quieten our minds to slow down our minds helps us in our daily life and also in our sleeping state as well. Yeah. So, you know, that's why that's why meditation is important. 
but not just meditation in a formal sense. It's really important to follow activities which are meditative. So there are lots of activities which are not strictly meditation, but they have a meditative effect, like swimming, for example, or or jogging, running, walking in the countryside. Mm-hmm. All, all of those activities have a mind quietening effect, as well as you know they have a physically they are very physically beneficial, but also they are mentally beneficial as well. So I recommend meditative activities as well as meditation itself. Okay, that would be really great. Um... Would you like to get into um, your uh, poem that we that we're going to you're going to share with everybody? Yeah. So this is um, this is the poem Tem- "My Temporary Life." Yes. So this um, this is a poem about about being aware of the the reality of our mortality, and you know a lot of people feel anxious about the the concept of death. And they don't really want to think about it. But actually, when you do contemplate it, when you contemplate the fragility and temporary nature of our life, it actually has the opposite effect to me anyway, and to many other people I know. It actually brings a sense of the preciousness and the miraculousness of life. So it has a powerful positive effect. It can even even have a, a powerful transformational effect. It can even bring about spiritual awakening. That's why many people have spiritual awakenings when they're diagnosed with cancer because it wakes them up to the reality of death and it changes their conception of life and it stops stops them taking life for granted so this is a poem on on that theme which is called my temporary life i love my temporary life because all its moments are precious and all the people i share it with are temporary precious beings And the world in which I live my life is full of temporary precious beauty, which will one day disappear as I will disappear. I love my temporary body because it's full of fragile processes, millions of tiny miracles occurring every second, all finely tuned and intertwined to sustain my temporary life, allowing me to savour the wonder of being in the world. I love my temporary friends because we're on the same journey, walking astride, helping and holding each other, relishing each other's company because we know we will only walk together for a while. I love my temporary life because it's a dynamic process in constant motion, ever since cells fused inside my mother's womb, flowing and and unfolding, expanding and and exploring like a wave slowly forming then rising that will one day slow down and dissipate and merge with the ocean again. That was beautiful. Thank you. Oh my goodness. (laughs) You all right? (laughs) Uh, It's just, um, it it sums up um, just, Coming to the other side of suicidal ideation uh, for me. That's why I asked you to read that because, um, you know, it, it is a very, uh, it's, it's just very hard to actually go through that journey. And um, I, I mm. actually love this poem for people that are suffering because um, once you kind of get on the other side, you don't want every, anybody else to feel that way ever again. No. You know? No. And um, it's almost like when you fall in love, you want everyone to be in love, you know, and you're that I'm in love and you're like, you get love and you get love and you get love. It's sort yeah. of the thing when you heal it, you you want everybody to know they don't have to go through. It, it's, it's so dark. It's so scary. It's so alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, if you can just get through the, to the next day and, you pick up this is the whole reason why I do this show. It's the whole reason why I talk to people such as yourself. And I appreciate, um, you know, every single person that comes on and even every person that listens, you know, even if it's not a lot of people, I continue to say, even if it's that one person, I really Mm. need to to keep doing it. So your work, um, 
just a, another great avenue for people who are seeking yeah well i i went through a period when i was younger you know um maybe two three years and um you know i, I sometimes see some of my students at university who are in difficulty you know feeling depressed and i feel like saying to them you know you, you know you, you will get through this you can get through this and you know i feel like my, my life now is so kind of joyous and fulfilling that i'm amazed to think that i, I did go through that but you know it makes you realize that when you're in it, it seems like it does seem like it's like, like you say, it seems so dark and so endless, but it is possible to get through it. And when you get through it, you know, your life can change drastically for the better. You know, it's like a, yeah. it's like a kind of dark forest. You go, when you walk through the forest and you leave the forest behind, suddenly you're in the, in the daylight, you have space all around you and, it, and it, it's, it's beautiful. And I, I want to remind people that, literally when it's healed, at least in my case, I can't even hold on to that expression. So I also, what this reason why I wrote my book, uh, Surviving Suicidal Ideation, coming out with the Swedenborg Foundation in June, because it is something that can go away pretty completely. You know, it can be cured. It can be healed, at least oh, yeah. in my case. Um, so I want yeah, to share that. <laughs> and, yeah. and I the hope because when I was in my dark spot, I kind of thought it was my life forever. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It's, it's like, no, this is who I am. This has been here forever in a way. Anytime a big life change would come in, a divorce or a loss of a job or anything, I would literally almost just like a book, pick up and go, I'm going to get depressed. I'm going to think these things are going to start playing in my head. I'm not going to tell anybody. Nobody's going to know about it. It's my little secret. Um, and, yeah, and it just plays like a record you know so yeah. smash that record Psh, have a smashing ceremony <laughs> <laughs> yeah good idea <laughs> so uh, have you uh did, were you able to meet with Eckhart or ha have you are you guys uh colleagues I mean I'm really curious about I feel like I'm one step closer to meeting Eckhart just talking to you <laughs> um yeah well, we meet occasionally I, I saw him recently usually when he comes to the UK we meet up Okay. So I met him recently. He was he was in the UK in October to do a talk in London. Okay. So we met up and spent the afternoon. Yeah, it was a lovely. We spent a lovely afternoon together, yeah. walking in London and went for a meal. Yeah, I uh, when I was um, maybe about three years ago, I was really heavily listening on to his YouTube channel, and a lot of times I would just put his channel on in the background if I had to work, because I feel like his um, his cadence and his voice is also very healing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you have very similar um, energy, but um, I, I also like to recommend that to people. If you find people that, you know, I just would put it on and he just, the way he's so calm would just make me laugh. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> we just need that, um, that energy. So I would just let it play in my, in my house sometimes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, he said himself, he said, I heard him say once that when he gives talks, it's not really what he says that's important. It's the, the feeling that people get, you know, it's, it, it's that sense of stillness, that sense of calmness that he, that he radiates. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Is there anything you'd uh, like to um, kind of leave us with it? Uh, you know, a thought? Um, okay. I'll, I'll leave you with a thought. Um, let me think the thought first. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd like to remind people, particularly people who are going through challenges or crises in their lives, that, you know, human beings grow, we grow through challenge and crisis. And there is this enormous potential which we tap into, particularly when, when we deepen ourselves through going through challenges and crises, and we harness that deep potential, which often goes, you know, unharnessed when life is running smoothly and comfortably. So, and there, there is this massive transformational potential in challenges. So when we emerge through the challenges, which we do, we always do because we're so resilient, then we'll find that we are deeper and stronger and more expansive. And that's, that's part of the process of spiritual awakening. That's what spiritual awakening is. And it's good to know that you're working for something, you know, that, you know, if you intellectualize this process, sometimes it helps. 
because you we you need this information when you're stuck and you know so i i really appreciate that and yeah. everybody um if you're interested the book is called the adventure uh, a practical guide to a uh, <laughs> a spiritual awakening i've actually kind of used the book a lot you can see it's already got tattered and torn a little bit um <laughs> it's uh from new world library it's out now it came out on the 23rd um uh, forward by eckhart tolle and also, um, he's also done a book called The Leap and a few others. So um, it'll all be linked below and on all the channels so you can find it easily. And thank you, Steve, Dr. Steve Taylor, for your time today. And we you're wish welcome. you so much luck you, on Peter. the book and all that you're doing and helping being in service to the community. We really appreciate it. No, you're welcome. Good luck with your book. And thanks for the uh, interview. It, it was lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And that's it. This has been a Liberated Healer podcast. Thank you.